All right, so let's talk about the history of GANs. Um, obviously, GANs are only six years old, but there's still a rich amount of history in here. So we'll quickly talk about some of the various popular architectures that have existed over time, um, and we will uh, quickly go through how they've changed and how they have uh, scaled over time. So the very first GAN is what I'm calling the Goodfellow GAN. The truth is it was just the original version of uh, a GAN. Um, this was created by Ian Goodfellow and some uh, researchers as a part of his lab. Um, the paper, if you're interested, is linked to here. Um, I'll post these slides in the uh, video chat when we're, when we're done. Um, but this is basically the Ian Goodfellow version of what I've shown as a GAN, which is just uh, both GANs start off stupid. The scrimmage is a little bit smarter than the generator, and they both play a game of learning. Um, so uh, that team produced a number of models. Um, you'll see here that the numbers look pretty good. This is the MNIST data set. Um, that looks pretty realistic. And the faces are not terrible, but also not great. Um, these are very, very small images, right? So like these are 28 by 28 pixels. So they're pretty small. Um, obviously they were good in black and white. You'll see here at the bottom, the color images are not good at all. Like I would say these are really poor in terms of like representing what is actually here in terms of shapes in terms of sizes, in terms of structures. So the first the first GAN, excuse me, was like a really good example, but it was just a starting point. You know, everyone knew that there was like gonna be way more we had to do. Um, and realistically, there were a lot of other versions of things similar to GANs at the time. There's things like variational autoencoders, auto some other things. Um, but realistically, like this was the first paper and it was a good starting point and people were excited about it, but there was a lot more work to do. I think the first paper that I, or the first GAN that I really became aware of was DC GAN, and that stands for Deep Convolutional GAN. Um, this was written uh, by a couple folks. Um, I think the one that I know most commonly is uh, a Facebook AI researcher, um, but this is basically a way to get uh, a more stable structure. Um, so if you go back to this image, uh, you'll see there's a stability issue, right? Like a lot of these images kind of just fall apart and become muddy messes. So DC GAN was the first to show an architecture that had stability in it. Now it's still pretty small. These were 64 by 64, um, and some people were able to fork it and get to a 128 by 128, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, but the image results are better, right? So you can look at these and you can sort of say like, okay, these are better images. They're still not great, but like some of these are better looking faces than what I'd seen previously. Some of these are pretty good. Um, some of them are also pretty scary and pretty bad. Uh, so again, 64 by 64, smaller, but like a better architecture. I think this came out maybe a year or two, two or three years maybe after that Ian Goodfellow. This is probably like 2016. Um, and also I'll mention uh, Robbie Barrett was the one who forked it and made Art DC GAN. Um, so to talk about these repos here really quickly, uh, the Torch repo was the original repo. No one really uses Torch anymore, so I doubt you'd even be able to get this to run on a modern uh, GPU if you try it. TensorFlow is like a modern version. Um, it works pretty well. Uh, I see a lot of people still using DC GAN today. Um, just for like quick experiments. I like to use DC GAN because um, it does produce sort of these messy images. So a lot of times I might use DC GAN to make a very small image and then I'll blow it up using super resolution um, as a way to uh, produce some new images that are still pretty weird and um, pretty strange. Uh, Robbie Barrett produced this art DC GAN repo. Um, it's pretty famous. Uh, he was one of the first ones to really bring like artistic stuff to DC GAN. He also built like a bunch of uh, tools and things to actually pull from WikiArt. So it's a pretty uh, famous repo. It's still available. Um, I doubt you could get it running today, but you could try. Um, DCGAN also, I think, was the first paper that I saw where they were doing arithmetic on images. So again, here the idea is that if you um, take, a, so basically it's like sort of almost wordplay. If you take a smiling woman and remove woman from it, you're going to have a the smile vector. Then you add a neutral man to that image, you're going to get a smiling man. Um, so this is the first exploration of the sort of latent spaces, how mathematics can work around what you're seeing in terms of images. Um, pretty interesting stuff, and was definitely like very much explored like during its time. Um, I'll also point out that this was, the reason I bring up Robbie Barrett is that uh, if you're familiar with this, this was the case of a company called Obvious. Um, he used, created an AI image and sold it at Christie's Auction House for some like $475,000. Um, yes, $475,000. Uh, and there's a bit of controversy behind that because uh, it was pretty clear they used Robbie Barrett's Art DC GAN fork. We don't know if they actually used his pre-trained models or if they used other models, but either way, it became a big uh, theoretical, ethical conundrum around who owns models. Um, Robbie was forking another company, like he had, he was using uh, WikiArt. So like, who really owns this thing? It became a big question. 
Um, but it kind of made Robbie famous, and Robbie's been doing amazing uh, AI artwork since then. Um, so it's pretty pretty famous in terms of like this is the model that uh, caused all this controversy. So the problem with uh, DC GAN was that it was really hard to get above 128. Um, so this was like one. Tw this is 64 by 64. Uh, Robbie was able to do 128 by 128, um, but a lot of the opportunities to get higher than that resolution-wise kind of fell apart. Um, so I know Google was able to do Big GAN. Big GAN was 512 by 512 in the end, I think, but I think it might have even taken them a couple of times to get up to that. Um, but we couldn't ever really crack that 1,000 pixel range. It was very hard for people to do. Um, Along came, I think in like 2018, maybe 2017, uh, along came NVIDIA. NVIDIA is like one of the big uh, labs in, involved in um, in GAN production, in part because they're a video card company, so they are mostly building on top of uh, NVIDIA video cards to use these pro these technologies. Um, and obviously, NVIDIA is also heavily involved in gaming, and gaming uh, and GANs have an interesting um, collaboration where obviously if a game maker could automate all of their image production they could put uh, all of their image makers out of business or like fire them all um, that's a question or a debate for another time but anyway nvidia is heavily involved in um, machine learning especially around uh, generative images grabbing my cat so she stops yelling at me okay so uh, NVIDIA came out with um, this progressive GAN. Uh, what they were able to do um, is basically prove that using an architecture that scaled up images over time, so starting with really, really small images like 4x4, four four, uh, then going to like 8x8, eight eight, then 16x16, 16 16, they were able to create uh, an image architecture that was more stable. So these are probably, these are probably 1024 by 1024. And you'll see there was a huge leap between um, both the image quality and the stability of this network. So getting up to 1024 by 1024 was huge. And you'll see here, like, you know, uh, in 2018, these looked like they would, like, it'd be hard, to, you'd be hard pressed to imagine making better images than this. Um, now, looking at these now, we can sort of point out that, like, hairstyles, um, GANs really struggle with hair, uh, you know, maybe some of the weird eye shapes and eye sizes that you can sort of point at these and realize that they're not perfect. Um, but in 2018, this was huge. Um, a year later, NVIDIA came out with the first version of StyleGAN, and it basically built on top of uh, what was already available in the progressive growing GAN. Um, and we'll watch a little bit of this video because I want to point out a couple notes here. So obviously, like uh, the, the, the style of these images were much better. Um, you'll see that they are also doing some of the mathematics stuff here by, uh, if these are the source images up here, um, and then this is what you're multiplying it by, you can generate new images um, using these sort of mathematic equations here. Now, the reason they call it StyleGAN was that because they thought of their generator as a bunch of styles. So each of these styles controls the, a particular effect. So I sort of think of these as layers. Um, if you've done Deep Dream or anything with like an Inception network, this might make sense. Um, early layers are the core styles, and those change dramatic structures. Um, these middle styles um, are generally changing like sort of some, some of the hair length or smiles or not smiles or other things. Then the fine styles are changing very, very minute things like lighting or hair texture or eye color, those sort of things. Um, so again, the core styles are changing very dramatic things, your pose structure, your other things. Um, and then we're also uh, you know, able to change different minutiae using these things. Uh, now, how you actually go about doing this is through what's called a W network. Um, I won't get too deep into this. I'll cover it in another video. but. Um, essentially, StyleGAN introduced a mapping network that maps from W space to Z space. Z space is what we call latent space. Um, the W space is more of a, uh, a mapping network. Um, a year later, NVIDIA uh, produced StyleGAN 2. Um, now, there's a couple things about, I'm going to play again, play a video here. Uh, StyleGAN 1 introduced or had these weird artifacts that were called, they call them water droplets. Um, and I have to say, in the face model, they were not as apparent, but in other models, they are far more apparent. You'll see this like bright white line here at each of these networks. Um, so they actually found that the progressive growing network was actually producing these artifacts um, for a variety of reasons. So in StyleGAN 2, they actually removed these networks. Uh, they changed the network architecture um, to remove these artifacts. And now you'll see a little bit more of, uh, you won't see the water droplets, 
um, they still were able to find ways to stabilize the network without using progressive growing. Um, so it's been pretty interesting stuff. Um, but you'll see again, like these water droplets sort of got removed. There was another issue with uh, the progressive growing where you'll see they're what they call phase artifacts. Um, so you'll see this issue of where teeth are sort of aligned always in the same position or eye structure doesn't actually change when your face moves left to right, that sort of thing. Um, this again was because of the, gro the progressive growing network. So when they removed this, um, they were able to uh, have a little bit more realistic uh, image. So you'll notice when she, when she shifts left to right, her eye sort of tracks alongside of it instead of staying in the same place. Um, so again, with each of these layers, we like are finding out how the old ar architecture was still sort of fake, and now we're getting rid of more and more of that. Um, so StyleGAN 2 is like currently sort of the, the highest end uh, model of these. Um, and I'm sure in another year, there'll be something even greater and we'll find out why this model isn't great. Uh, but there's some really interesting stuff here. Uh, so really quickly, we went from 2014 to 2019 uh, to producing these really, really high res images that are even far more realistic than they were uh, even a year prior. Um, so we'll probably see this happen over and over again. And with that, I'm gonna jump into another video just on some inspirational materials.